Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video for the 17 days ago into GCSE Maths exams. So keep up with hard work, you're doing really, really well. And today we're going to focus on the topic of real life graphs. So they're graphs based on real life situations. It might be graphs that involve uh, cost of plumbers and things like that, where you've got the cost of the job and you've got the straight line graph for it, you've got to draw one for it. So we're going to look at those type of questions today. I really hope you found this video useful and I'm going to go through some questions. There'll be some for you to try. But also in today's one, I'd highly recommend you print the practice questions because you might need to actually plot and draw some real life graphs. So the practice questions will be useful for that as well. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to look at real life graphs. So we're going to look at linear graphs that are used in real life situations. Now we looked at linear graphs from y equals mx plus c with 60 days to go and 59 days to go. So we looked at the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. We looked at finding the gradient, we looked at the y-intercepts and so on. Now in this video we're going to look at how to apply that to real life situations. So here we've got a graph and it says Dara is a plumber and the graph shows how much he charges for each job. So he's got this graph and it helps him work out the cost for each job. So we've got a job that lasts no hours. So must be like a set call out fee perhaps is 80 pound if it's one hour it's going to be a hundred pound if it's two hours it's 120 pound if it's three hours it's 140 pound if it's four hours it's 160 pound and so on so this graph shows how much dower charges for each of his plumbing jobs so let's have a look at some questions so the first question says we've got this graph and it says how much does dower charge for a job last in two hours so if we want to find how much dower charges for a job last in two hours we go to the graph we go to two hours here we go up up to the line so there and that's 120 pound so that's 120 so that would cost 120 pound okay the next question the next question says a job costs 180 pound how much did it last so we're going to go to 180 pound now if we have a look here we've got 160 and 200 so 180 is in the middle so we're going to go across from 180 and we get to here and then down and as you can see that's a five hour job so the job lasted five hours and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, how much is Dara's call-out fee? So in certain situations, there's a set fee. Perhaps if you get into a taxi, and before the taxi even moves, the, the meter starts at a particular price. And then as the, journey, as the journey begins and as the taxi moves, that price goes up. Uh, whenever you perhaps you call a plumber, there might be a call-out fee. Perhaps it might be £50 to visit the house. And then if the job lasts an hour, there's perhaps an hourly rate and so on. So this question says, how much is Dara's call-out fee? So to find the call-out fee, we just go to not hours, so zero hours, and we go up and we can see that's 80 pound so that's the y-intercept the y-intercept will tell us the call-out fee so that set charge is 80 pounds so obviously a job lasts in no hours that just must be the call-out fee so how much is dara's call-out fee the answer is 80 pound and then the next part the next part says how much does dara charge for each hour so let's have a look so we've got 80 pound for a zero hour job for one hour it'll be 100 pound for two hours, it's 120 pound. For three hours, it's 140. As you can see, it's getting bigger by 20 pound each hour. So every single hour, it goes up by 20 pound. So how much does Dara charge for each hour? The answer is 20 pound. And that's it. So we'll find this by working out the gradient. So remember to find the gradient of a line. So this one was quite nice. We could just go across and see it went up 20 pound. But what if it was 17 pound 50 or something like that? It might be a bit harder to spot on the graph. So what we would do is if you want to work out this, how much he charges for each hour, one approach could be to do what we done, to go across one hour and see how much went up by and just keep checking that or another way is to work out the gradient of the line so if we were to work out the gradient of the line we could just choose two points on the line so i've chosen this point here 0 80 and i'm going to choose this one here okay which is four hours and 160 pound remember to work out the gradient of a line you do a little right angle triangle like so you do your little right angle and you do rise over run so the rise and the run so the rise has gone from £80 up to £160, so the rise has gone up is £80. And in terms of the run, that's how far across you're going, so that's four hours. And then if we do 80 divided by 4, the rise divided by the run, that will give us the gradient. And 80 divided by 4 is equal to 20, so that's equal to £20. So in finding out how much dower charges for each hour, we're just working out the gradient of the line. So in other words, for every one hour you go across, what it goes up by. And that's it. So his call-out fee is £80, that's the y-intercept, and the gradient is how much he charges for each hour which would be 20 pound and that's it okay let's have a look at another question so this question says the graph below shows the cost of hiring a hot tub so for instance for two days it costs 150 pound for 10 days it costs 350 pound and so on and we're told the graph intersects the vertical axis at 100 so we can see here at the vertical axis it intersects at 100 and the question says what does that represent so feel free to press pause now and write down what this 100 represents Okay, so as you can see, this is for zero days. So it's before you've even received the hot tub. So this must be a set fee. It's a set charge. So it's £100 to begin with, and then there must be a charge per day of renting the hot tub. So this £100 is a set fee. So let's write that down. 
And that is, I've just written down the £100 is a set fee. Perhaps it's for delivering the hot tub or perhaps setting up the hot tub. So it's a set fee to begin with. Okay, so that's what the 100 represents. Okay, let's look at our next part. Okay, so the next part, we've got the same graph and we're told to find the gradient of the graph. So we've been asked to find the gradient of that graph and we've been asked to explain what it represents. So press pause now and work out the gradient of that line and explain what it represents. Okay, so we want to find the gradient of this line. So we're going to choose two points on the line. Now we can choose any two points. I'm going to choose this point here and I'm going to choose this point here. So I've chosen those two points. We want to work out the gradient. So remember, we're going to do rise divided by run. So let's do a little right angle triangle. In terms of the run, we're going from two days to six days. So the run is four. In terms of the rise, we're going from a height of 150 up to 250. So the rise is 100. And then to find the gradient, we're going to do the rise divided by run. So remember, the gradient M is equal to the rise divided by the run. So in this case, that'll be 100 divided by 4, and that's equal to 25. And if we think about the situation, every day we go across, we're going up 25. If we go across a day, we're going up 25. That's the cost per day of rent in the hot tub. So for instance, for zero days, the set fee is £100. If we go across one day and up 25, that's equal to £125. If we go across one and up 25, that's £150. So that one with 25 represents the cost of hiring the hot tub every single day. So it's the price of hiring the hot tub every day. And I've just written down, it represents the cost of hiring the hot tub each day. It's £25 per day. And that's it. Okay, and if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So next question, we're told that Beth's got a full paddle and pull. So Beth's got a paddle and pull and it's full. And the graph shows the depth of water in the paddle and pull over time. So we've got the depth and time. So as you can see at the beginning of time, so whenever the, uh, she starts the timer, the depth in the paddle and pull is 70 centimetres. So it's full. So whenever it's full, it's 70 centimetres. And then as time goes on, what happens is the depth is going down. It's decreasing. So that must mean the water's been emptied out of the paddle and pull. And at 12 seconds, the depth is 10 centimetres meters and so on so it doesn't actually empty at 12 seconds there's actually 10 centimeters left in terms of the depth of the water okay let's have a look at our first part so the first part says the graph intersects the vertical axis at 70 what does that represent so press pause now and write down what that 70 represents now we're told in the question that Beth was emptying a full paddle and pull, so that must be the depth of the water whenever it's full. So let's explain that. And that's it, I've just written down the 70 centimetres represents the depth of water when she starts to empty it. Okay, let's look at our next part. The next part asks us to find the gradient of the graph and to explain what the gradient represents. So press pause now and work that out. Okay, so let's choose two points on this graph. I'm going to choose this point, 0, 70, and I'm going to choose this point here, 10, 20. So the two points I'm going to choose, and I'm going to do a little right angle triangle, so a little right angle triangle. Now, obviously, here the line's going down, so it's going to have a negative gradient. So in terms of the run, the run, it's going from 0 across to 10, so the run's 10. And in terms of the rise, we're going from 70 down to 20. So that means the rise would be negative 50. It's going down 50. So because it's going down, it's minus, so minus 50. So we've got the gradient M is equal to the rise, which is minus 50, divided by the run, which is 10. And minus 50 divided by 10 is equal to minus 5. So the gradient of this line is minus 5. So that means for every one second, it goes down 5 centimeters. It goes across 1, down 5, across 1, down 5, across 1, down 5. So that gradient represents the decrease in the level of water for every one second and it goes down five centimeters and actually if we needed to include units here because we're doing centimeters divided by seconds it'd be centimeters per second so it's minus five centimeters per second so the depth of the water is decreasing by five centimeters every second and let's explain that and that's how I've just explained. The gradient represents the change in the depth of water in the pool so it's a decrease of five centimeters every second and that's it and that's it so in this video we've looked at real life graphs we looked at how to answer questions involving them I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's 17 days to go into your GCC maths exam, so keep up your revision, keep on doing your five a days, any revision sessions, go into the library, revise them with friends, get your friends and family to quiz you, pass papers, all those things. Keep up the hard work, you're doing fantastically well, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers, bye.